travel can be rough on the body. But just like aging, it doesn't have to be. Let me tell you one thing right off the bat. My wife and I do not suffer from jet lag. That's right. We do not suffer from jet lag. And all of our friends and acquaintances and my patients are shocked when I tell them that. Now, my wife and I, as you probably know, uh, fly to Europe uh, a great deal. One thing you may not know is I actually write most of my books while I'm over in Europe. Because, quite frankly, I'm not seeing patients during that time, and I see patients normally six days a week. So it's one of the few times I actually have to sit down and write. In fact, I just completed my upcoming book, The Gut-Brain Paradox, while in Tuscany. And a lot of what I write <laughs> is developed while we're in Europe. So how do you get over jet lag? What are the tricks for travel? That's what we're going to talk about today. Now, first of all, I'm absolutely positively convinced that jet lag comes from a disturbance in the circadian rhythm of your gut bacteria. That's right. Your gut bacteria, your microbiome, your gut buddies have their own circadian rhythm. They become active and produce compounds in time with daylight sinking. And there's more and more evidence. You'll also learn about this in the upcoming book, The Gut-Brain Paradox, that this circadian rhythm of your gut microbiome controls your circadian rhythm and jet lag. So what do you do on a flight to get these guys reset? So I'm going to talk about what to do before the flight, what to do during the flight, and what to do when you get off the plane. First off, many people take early flights, and particularly living on the West Coast, if I'm heading to the East Coast or farther, many of these flights start off very early in the morning. Now, most people tend to toss and turn when they know they have an early morning flight coming up. One of the easiest things to do is start preparing as if you were normally beginning up really early. So rather than trying to go to bed early the night before the flight, start doing that two, three, four, even a week beforehand so that you're accustomed to getting up much earlier. Second thing I like to do is, you know it, get a dog. Dogs are incredibly useful at getting you up early. They don't have alarm clocks. They work on circadian rhythm. Now, avoid overindulging in alcohol the night before the test. Alcohol really disturbs deep sleep. And those of you who carry an aura ring or a whoop band can usually detect the effect of alcohol on deep sleep. And let me tell you, it's not good. Many people think they got to knock themselves out with alcohol so they can go to sleep early. But you really want that deep sleep to help you with the time zone changes. So please, please, please do not use alcohol before a long trip. Now, we'll get into alcohol on a trip in just a second. Here's the other thing. Make sure all your travel documents are in one place. The last thing you want to do when you're groggy in the morning is go around looking, oh my gosh, what did I do with my passport? What, you know, where's my plane tickets? Do it the day before, the night before, the week before, and put them all in one place. Here's a fun thing. Now, I don't have any problem listening to an alarm. I use my phone as an alarm, but my phone is in the room next to me, not in my bedroom. And it's nice and loud. But I have a patient who actually sets two alarms so that there's no chance that you're going to miss the alarm going off. Okay, now what do you do with long flights? Many of us, now that COVID is hopefully over, at least the severe forms, are traveling. Uh, you can't avoid it if you go to the airports noticing how many people are flying. First of all, People tell you don't drink alcohol on the plane. What I have noticed is the people who drink alcohol excessively on the plane, those are the ones that suffer. 
I personally have a glass of red wine on the plane, a glass of red wine. And quite frankly, they give you small portions on the plane, as well they should. But I see many travelers next to me have glass after glass, have several cocktails, and they're not doing well. Let's put it that way. Now, I found that if you're going to do an international flight, it's better if you can arrange it to take an international flight, a long international flight, that leaves late afternoon or early evening. Why? Because they will hopefully serve you a meal, and then your bedtime will be about when your bedtime would normally be. The other thing we found, particularly going to Europe, is that those flights will arrive midday or late afternoon, so that you then actually become almost synced with that time zone a day later. It's a trick that I've used over and over again, and if you've never tried it, try that trick. Now, on the other hand, if you are taking earlier flights, and a lot of the airlines like to arrive early, particularly in Europe, then here's the deal. Please, please, please stay up once you get there. Two reasons. Number one, you want to be exposed to bright light for at least 30 minutes in your new time zone. That bright light will really, really enhance resetting your circadian rhythm. I've written about the superchiotic nucleus in your brain that light senses and really sets how your circadian rhythm works. And bright light exposure is essential. However you can get it, that's number one. Number two, while you're on the airplane, I mentioned eating dinner and going to bed. Certain international airlines have fairly decent food. I'll bring up Air France as an example, and no, they don't pay me to tell you that. On the other hand, a lot of the American airlines, uh, their food is not very good for you. So try fasting. It's another way to reset your circadian rhythm. Bring your own snacks. I always carry my Gundry nut mix. Take some lectin-free bars like Gundry MD's macadamia nut bar. And there are other lectin-free bars to choose from. You don't have to eat the snacks that they give you. But, by the way, Delta now has pistachios as an option for a snack. The third thing is get up and walk every two hours, particularly if you're in coach or you don't have a seat that reclines very much. There is a real thing called deep vein thrombosis or economy thrombosis. Get up and move. You should be drinking enough water on the plane that you probably do want to get up and move every couple hours to go to the bathroom. And use that as an excuse to keep hydrated so that it'll make you get up and pee. Now, there are all sorts of gadgets and tools that you can take with you. Your feet most likely will swell. Now, that is not a sign of a dangerous thing. On the other hand, if your feet swelling bothers you, buy yourself a pair of compression socks and wear them. Quite frankly, as a heart surgeon, I wear compression stockings all the time because I stand constantly. But it'll keep your ankles from swelling. Invest in noise-canceling headphones or earplugs. The noise on modern jetliners can actually be higher than a nightclub. And that's a stressor on your body. Plus, the noise of fellow passengers or the noise of talking in the aisles is enough to disturb many people's sleep. And these noise-canceling headphones are getting pretty doggone reasonable, particularly the ones that fit in your ears. Or just get some earplugs. They work well as well. Now, a lot of the long flights uh, do pass out face masks, uh, eye masks, even in economy, in economy plus. But just in case, and I've been on some recently where they didn't, 
I always bring an eye mask in my backpack, and I always have it with me, and it really does help block out light. It's the same way you really want blackout curtains in your bedroom. You want blackout eye masks. And there's a number of companies that make really good blackout eye masks. Bone Charge happens to be one of them. Speaking of Bone Charge, if you're going to watch movies on the plane, and quite frankly, I very rarely do that, but if I do, I wear blue blocking glasses. That blue light is one of the best ways to keep you awake that anyone has ever designed. And if you're going to watch movies on the plane, please invest in a pair of blue light blocking glasses. And again, one of my favorites is by the company Bone Charge. Finally, supplements. I'm a huge fan of supplementing for travel. First of all, whatever vitamin D dose you are currently taking, double it. Double it for a couple of days before you leave. Double it while you're gone and keep doubling it for a couple of days after you get back. That's my number one trick. Number two, double your vitamin C during the same time period. It's a one-two punch. If you want to add zinc, like 30 milligrams to that regimen, that's fine with me. But vitamin D and vitamin C are the one-two punch. Now, the other trick that we've tried that I think makes this so successful is we change up our probiotic regimen. Go crazy with probiotics. Whatever probiotics you're taking, double it. Take them the morning you get there. Now, most people are taking kind of one or two types of probiotics. In my opinion, you really want to change things up. So get yourself a multiple strain probiotic. My wife and I happen to take Gundry MD 24 strain probiotic while we travel for that purpose. The second thing is up your polyphenol regimen. You may remember that polyphenols are the food that feed good gut bacteria. So we happen to take packets of Vital Reds in individual packets. We put them in our water in our plane. We put them in our water when we go down to breakfast. And it's a really good one-two punch, and they also have probiotics, of readjusting the circadian rhythm of your microbiome. Finally, take a shot of olive oil. Olive oil is loaded with polyphenols. And every breakfast spot in Europe that I've ever been to has olive oil available. And they'll look at you a little funny, but pour yourself a shot of olive oil instead of a shot of orange juice. Finally, please reject the orange juice on the plane or at the breakfast where you're going. The one best way to kill off your immune system is orange juice. The sugar in orange juice has been shown in human volunteers to blunt your immune system function for six hours. And that's exactly what you don't want to happen when traveling long distances. Most people are so tired that they find they want sugar at all costs. And believe me, when I was a busy heart surgeon, I wanted sugar at all costs when I was up night after night. And that's one of the reasons I got so fat. So please avoid the need to wake yourself up with sugar. You'll thank me in the long run. Finally, there are products that will change your circadian rhythm. I make one called BioSync, which, as the name implies, synchronizes your circadian rhythm. And we always travel with BioSync as well. Finally, take a powder like our new Nitro Pulse, which makes nitric oxide. That'll improve your blood flow, improve the elasticity of your blood vessels, and that will also help make this change. Again, 
we do not get jet lag. And I think it's the tricks that I've just told you that's going to help you avoid what most people think is one of the worst parts of long distance traveling. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. Please buy bottled water whenever you're traveling. Pay the extra money at a restaurant for bottled water. Even carry bottled water up to your room and brush your teeth with it.